ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम वी सी प्रमोद एंड विथ मी इज तनवी खुराना द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू पार्टिसिपेट इन आउटरीच सेशन ऑफ जी सेवन समिट टूडे एंड टूमोरो फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारामन टू चेयर फोर्टी फोर्थ जी एस टी काउंसिल मीटिंग दिस मॉर्निंग एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर सेज इंडिया मूवड माउंटेन्स टू कंटेन सेकेंड वेव ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड तमिलनाडु एक्सटेंड लॉकडाउन विथ मोर रिलैक्सेशन आई एम डी वॉन्स ऑफ हैवी रेन इन मुंबई एंड एडजॉनिंग एरियाज ड्यूरिंग वीकेंड मॉनसून लाइकली टू रीच डेली बाय द फिफ्टींथ ऑफ जून ट्वेल्व डेज अहेड ऑफ शेड्यूल स्पोर्ट्स मिनिस्टर किरेन रिजेजू लॉन्चेज सेंट्रल एथलीट इंजुरी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम फॉर ट्रेनिंग ऑफ एथलीट्स फॉर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर ओलंपिक्स इन फ्रेंच ओपन टेनिस नोवैक जॉकोविच स्टंस डिफेंडिंग चैंपियन राफेल नडाल टू सेट अप समिट क्लैश विद स्टेफनॉस सिट्सिपास इन मेन सिंगल्स बारबोरा क्रेजिकोवा टू टेक ऑन अनस्तासिया पावलुचेनकोवा इन वुमेन सिंगल्स फाइनल टूडे As many states are relaxing lockdown norms we advise our listeners not to lower their guard as the covid-19 pandemic remains a threat to our health please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow the four simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated for any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline number 011 Two three nine seven eight zero four six and one zero seven five, and now the news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in the outreach sessions of the G7 summit today and tomorrow in the virtual format. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has invited Mr. Modi for the summit, which began at Cornwall in England yesterday. The United Kingdom currently holds the presidency of the G7 and has invited India along with Australia, South Korea and South Africa as guest countries for the G7 summit. The meeting is being held in hybrid mode. The group of 7 G7 is an informal group of 7 countries that includes the United States, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan and the United Kingdom. The theme for the summit is Build Back Better and the UK has outlined four priority areas for its presidency. they are leading the global recovery from corona virus while strengthening resilience against future pandemics promoting future prosperity by championing free and fair trade tackling climate change and preserving the planet's biodiversity and championing shared values and open societies the leaders are expected to exchange views on the way forward on global recovery from the pandemic with a focus on health and climate change Meanwhile UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson urged fellow world leaders to build back better after the covid pandemic addressing the G7 summit in Cornwall Prime Minister Johnson said it was vital to learn from the mistakes of the 2008 financial crisis and tackle the scar of inequality after days of talks at the seaside resort at Carbis Bay leaders joined the queen for a dinner nearby the distribution of covid vaccines is also high on the summit agenda US President Joe Biden is among those being hosted by the UK Prime Minister for the 3-day meeting. It is the first face-to-face -face summit of the G7 representing most of the world's biggest economies since before the pandemic started early last year. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman will chair the 44th meeting of the Goods and Services Tax GST Council at 11 a.m. today. The meeting is expected to take a decision on relief in respect of COVID-19 related individual items based on the report of group of ministers. The meeting will be attended by Minister of State for Finance Anurag Thakur along with the finance ministers and senior officials of states and union territories. At its meeting on 28th of May the GST council had recommended full exemption from IGST on a number of specified covid-19 related goods such as medical oxygen oxygen concentrators and other oxygen storage and transportation equipment certain diagnostic markers test kits and covid-19 vaccines the exemption is valid up to 31st of August this year 
External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar has assured Indian diaspora in Kuwait that the second wave of COVID-19 is receding in India and the government moved mountains to contain the pandemic. Dr. Jay Shankar, who arrived in Kuwait on his first bilateral visit to the oil-rich Gulf nation on Wednesday, addressed the Indian community at the conclusion of his meetings in the country. He said the second wave of the COVID-19 has started to recede. The minister said a large part of it has been made possible by very vigorous response by the government to the second wave. Dr. Jay Shankar said the government ran hundreds of oxygen trains to ferry oxygen from the production centers to the major cities. He said all the flights in the country were mobilized, including the Air Force plans for the oxygen cylinder tanks to be moved both within the country and from abroad to India. Dr. Jay Shankar said the economy has started to make a strong recovery, asserting that there is a sense that the economic impact of the second wave would be less than what happened in the last year. He lauded the contributions of the Indian community, saying in many ways it defines India abroad. The belief we have that India will pick up, that India will recover rapidly as the steady rise of India and its economy and its influence in the world, that would continue. We very much recognize what the Indian community in Kuwait did. When he helped to acquire cylinders here, oxygen cylinders, it is both the relevance, the practical relevance of what you did as well as the feeling for your motherland which this expresses, that is uh, deeply appreciated. The union government has said that India is registering a sharp decline in active caseload and number of fresh cases. Briefing media in New Delhi last evening, Joint Secretary of Health and Family Welfare Ministry Lav Agarwal has said daily new cases are continuously declining in the country. He said there are 335 districts wherein drastic reduction in fresh cases have been witnessed. देश में कंटिन्यू और शार्प डिक्लाइन इन डेली न्यू केसेस हम पिछले पांच हफ्तों से ऑब्जर्व कर रहे हैं जहां सात मई को देश में चार लाख चौदह हजार प्रतिदिन औसत के हिसाब से केसेस नोट किए गए थे वह घटते घटते दो लाख से कम पच्चीस मई के समय पर उसके बाद सात जून को एक लाख से कम होते हुए ग्यारह जून में इक्यानवे हजार सात सौ दो केसेज रिपोर्ट हुए हैं यानी कि अगर हम पीक से कंपैरिजन में ऑब्जर्व करें तो हम पाते हैं कि करीब सेवेंटी एट परसेंट जो रिपोर्टेड पीक देश में ऑब्जर्व की गई है उससे केसेज में कमी आई है Mr Agarwal also said the recovery rate is continuously improving in the country and it now stands at 94.93%. Talking to media member health Neeti Ayur Dr VK Paul said there is no need to panic for an immediate change in the COVID-19 vaccine dosage interval. On the query related to shortening the gap between two doses of COVID shield vaccine Dr Paul has said all decisions must be taken very carefully. जो सुझाव आया है उसको उन्होंने जो रिसेंट डेटा आया है म्यूटेंट के परिपेक्ष में बाहर की दो तीन स्टडीज को अच्छी स्टडीज को उन्होंने कोट किया है उसके बेस पे उनका सुझाव यह है कि इसको फिर हम दोबारा आठ हफ्ते पे वापस जाए एक प्रोसेस है कि ये जो डिबेट है ये पब्लिक डोमेन में जरूर होनी चाहिए बातचीत होनी चाहिए लेकिन इसका जो फैसला है वो उस फोरम पे होना चाहिए जहां पे की अमीनेंट लोग हैं जो इस चीज को जानते हैं Welcoming a discourse on this topic Dr Paul highlighted the need for due scientific process in arriving at such decisions he appealed to respect the decision taken by the national technical advisory group on immunization फैसले जो है वो इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज मैकेनिज्म में किए जाते हैं और वो मैकेनिज्म जो एंटेगी है नेशनल टेक्निकल एडवाइजरी ग्रुप ऑन इम्यूनाइजेशन है वो इन सुझावों को रिसीव भी करते हैं वहां एक्सपर्ट्स हैं ये फैसले सिर्फ पूरी पिक्चर को लेके किए जाते हैं तो अभी तक भी किए गए और सिस्टमेटिकली उन्होंने साइंस देखा सब कुछ देखने के बाद जो राय दी है कि तीन महीने के बाद हमें नेक्स्ट वैक्सीन लगना चाहिए क्लैरिटी उन्होंने दी लेकिन अगर और डेटा आता है सुझाव आते हैं उसको वो कंसिडर कर सकते हैं साइंस के जो फैसले हैं साइंस जो दिखाई देती है और जो कॉन्टेक्स्ट में अप्लाई करना होता है उसको जोड़ के किए जाते हैं India has administered more than 24 crore 93 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the country so far. The health ministry said more than 31 lakh 50 thousand vaccine doses were administered yesterday. The union government is continuously making efforts to curb the wastage of COVID-19 vaccines by advising the states and union territories to effectively use the vaccine doses. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry said that equitable access to safe and effective vaccines is critical in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. 
It said that vaccine wastage must be reduced and kept to a minimum level which will further help vaccinate many people. All the states and union territories have been advised that each vaccination session will cater to at least 100 beneficiaries avoiding vaccine wastage. The Union Health Ministry is working closely with all the states and union territories to deal with the issue of vaccine hesitancy. The ministry has asked the states to generate awareness in rural and tribal areas about the benefits of vaccine. The Union Health Ministry has emphasized on the need for a robust reporting mechanism on a daily basis for monitoring district-wise COVID cases and deaths. The states have been advised to report COVID deaths according to the guidelines. These directions came in the wake of some media reports wherein misreporting of deaths due to COVID-19 was alleged. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare had reported a total of 6,148 deaths on 10th of June of this month. The Ministry has said 3,971 deaths reported by Bihar on that date due to reconciliation done by the state. The Union Government has written to the Bihar Government to provide a detailed date and district-wise breakup of the reconciled number of deaths to the Ministry. Union Government is committed to fight COVID in rural and far-flung areas. Health and Family Welfare Ministry said that India is the second largest manufacturer of personal protective equipment PPE kits in the world and PPE kits were made available to states in excess of their demands. This response came in the wake of allegations wherein it was claimed that health workers do not have PPE kits. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to participate in outreach sessions of G7 summit today and tomorrow. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman to chair 44th GST Council meeting this morning. External Affairs Minister S J Shankar says India moved mountains to contain second wave of COVID-19. Himachal Pradesh and Tamil Nadu extend lockdown with more relaxations. IMD warns of heavy rain in Mumbai and adjoining areas during the weekend. Monsoon likely to reach Delhi by 15th of June, 12 days ahead of the schedule. Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju launches Central Athlete Injury Management System for training of athletes for 2024 Olympics. In French Open tennis, Novak Djokovic stunts defending champion Rafael Nadal to set up summit clash with Stefanos Tsitsipas in men's singles. Barbora Kretsikova to take on Anastasia Pavlochenkova in women's singles final today. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The centre has been disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers created for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The child helpline number is 1098 for senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. The helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences Neem Hans for psychological support is 08046110007. Ayush COVID-19 counseling helpline number is 14443 and MyGov WhatsApp help desk number is 9013151515. Corona curfew in Himachal Pradesh has been extended till further orders with more relaxations. The decision to extend the curfew was taken yesterday at a cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. Our correspondent has filed this report. 
In a state cabinet meeting, it was decided to increase the timing of opening of all shops and markets in the state from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from 14th of this month with weekend shutdowns to remain in force. According to new guidelines decided in the state cabinet meeting, there will be no need for RT-PCR tests to enter the state from 14th of this month. Intrastate public transport have also been allowed with 50% occupancy. All the medical colleges, Ayurvedic colleges and dental colleges would remain open from 23rd June. The cabinet also provided a relief of about Rs 40 crore to the transport sector, one of the worst hit sector by pandemic, which include an interest subvention scheme on working capital for stage carriage operators. Sanjeev Sundriyal, AIR News, Shimla. The Tamil Nadu government has extended the lockdown in the state till the 21st of this month with more relaxations. More from our correspondent. The state government has allowed functioning of beauty parlors, saloons and spas without air conditioning facilities with 50% staff and customers. Government managed parks and playgrounds will be open from 6 to 9 p.m. only for walking exercise. Ophthalmologists and mechanic shops will be open from morning 9 to 2 p.m. Agricultural shops, handicrafts, manufacturers are allowed to function from morning 6 to 5 p.m. Taskmark will be open from morning 10 to evening 5 o'clock. Mobile phones and accessories, building materials, household furniture and utensils shops will be open from 9 to afternoon 2 o'clock. Administrative activities on admission to schools, colleges and universities have been allowed. Joy, AIR News, Chennai. Bihar government has set an ambitious target of vaccinating another 6 crore people in next 6 months. This was stated by Chief Minister Nitish Kumar after reviewing the status of COVID vaccination in the state. He said over 1 crore 18,52,000 people have been vaccinated in the state so far. Mr. Kumar ordered to involve all the state government employees in the vaccination drive. The chief minister instructed health officials to run the vaccination campaign on a regular basis and use different mediums to educate people about its benefits. Gujarat recorded 481 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. 1,526 patients recovered during the last 24 hours and were discharged from the hospitals. More on this from our Ahmedabad correspondent. Total 7,97,734 patients have been recovered from COVID-19 in Gujarat till now. The recovery rate further improved and reached up to 97.36%. Maximum 69 new cases of COVID-19 reported from Ahmedabad, while Surat reported 62 new cases. Nine patients lost their lives yesterday. Gujarat has now 11,657 active cases at present, out of which 296 patients are on ventilator. Meanwhile, 2,86,459 patients have been vaccinated in the state yesterday. With these, more than 1 crore 97 lakh persons have been vaccinated in the state till now. Yogesh Pandya, AIR News, Ahmedabad. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakare has asked village heads or sarpanches to make a resolve of strictly implementing COVID-appropriate behaviour and protocol to prevent the possibility of a third wave of coronavirus infections. More from our Mumbai correspondent. While addressing a virtual meeting with the village heads of Aurangabad, Nagpur and Amravati region, Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre said that Sarpanch must use the local dialect and folk arts to spread awareness regarding COVID-related guidelines. He also praised the village heads for their efforts to keep their respective villages COVID-free and for optimal use of social media like WhatsApp. The Chief Minister informed the village heads that vaccine doses will be distributed as per availability, he said that the local teams must be formed to keep a tab on the health conditions and infrastructure requirements to minimize the need for hospitalization. Madhuri Pange with Nisha Rani, AIR News, Mumbai. Senior BJP leader and Union Minister Ravishankar Prasad has criticized the proposed doorstep delivery of ration scheme of Delhi government. The minister said that the doorstep ration delivery scheme is in direct contravention with the National Food Security Act 2013. Raising serious questions over the intention of the ruling party in the National Capital Territory, Mr. Prasad asked as to why the One Nation One Ration Card scheme has not been implemented in Delhi. More from our correspondent. The Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad has said that ration has to be given to the beneficiaries only from a fair price shop as per the National Food Security Act. He said, delivery of fruit grains to the doorstep to the beneficiaries will create avenues where ration can be stiffened off for black marketing. 
Mr. Prasad has informed that all the states and union territories have implemented the one nation, one ration card scheme, except three, including Delhi. देश के 34 राज्यों और यूटी ने वन नेशन वन राशन कार्ड को एडॉप्ट कर लिया। भारत के सिर्फ तीन प्रदेशों ने अभी तक वन नेशन वन राशन कार्ड को इंप्लीमेंट नहीं किया है। एक आसाम क्योंकि वहां आधार लेट से शुरू हुआ था, जो उनके स्थानीय समस्याएं थी नागरिकता को लेकर के जाते। और बाकी दो प्रदेश, एक का नाम है बंगाल, और दूसरे का नाम है दिल्ली मेरा सवाल यह है श्रीमान अरविंद केजरीवाल से कि आपने वन नेशन वन राशन कार्ड दिल्ली में क्यों नहीं लागू किया है द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट हैज सेड दैट फेयर प्राइस शॉप आर एट फिक्स्ड लोकेशंस व्हिच कैन बी मॉनिटर्ड एंड इंस्पेक्टेड एट एनी टाइम बाय द अथॉरिटीज हाउएवर इन केस ऑफ होम डिलीवरी ऑफ राशन इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू मॉनिटर द डिलीवरी एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑन द फील्ड एंड नो चेक कैन बी केप्ट ऑन देम the union government has also found no merit in claim that it is difficult for beneficiaries to visit fair price shop in each and every part of delhi it said there are about 2000 fair price shops in delhi which efficiently cover each and every location of the national capital bhupender singh air news delhi all india radio lay has become lifeline in ladakh region from the day of its establishment on 25th of June in 1971, AIR Lay journey has been glorious as the only means of communication for information and entertainment in the difficult and landlocked terrain. Until recently, All India Radio Lay has become part and parcel of life for Ladakhi people. We have a report. All India Radio Lay has become an institution for revival of dying and forgotten arts, cultural practices, folklore and languages. Similarly, people in Ladakh tune to AIR Lay for confirmation of news. Abdul Ghani Sheikh, an 85-year-old information service retired officer, says how All India Radio Lay has played a role in past testing time of Ladakh in its development. All India Radio Lay has played a significant role like remote and lesser developed Ladakh. Awareness was created. Radio not only only entertain but also disseminate information. It has played a role to reach to the people about the culture, heritage and historical heritage. Folklore used to be broadcast. Folk song revived, modern song composed and many more roles have played in life of people. After retiring from World of News as editor in 1992, Mr. Abdul Ghani Sheikh is keeping his relation with the public through radio and books. With Ramesh Chandra, this is Young Chandralma for AR News from Lelada. In Sports Roundup, All India Radio brings you the latest news updates from the world of sports. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju has launched the Central Athlete Injury Management System, CAIMS, for streamlining the sports medicine and rehabilitation support offered to the athletes. It aims to provide the best of sports injury management support nearest to the athlete's geographical location. CAIMS will help to standardize appropriate injury treatment protocol for athletes across the country. It will start with the support for athletes who are a part of Target Olympic Podium Scheme TOPS Development Group expected to participate in 2024 and beyond. Top seed Novak Djokovic knocked out defending champion Rafael Nadal to reach the men's singles final of the French Open tennis. The Serbian stunned 13-time champion Nadal in four sets 3-6, 6-3, 7-6, in the epic battle of semi-finals that lasted for four hours and 11 minutes last night. With this, Djokovic has become the only player to beat Spaniard Nadal in French Open twice. Djokovic will now face fifth seed Stefanos Tsitsipas in the Summit Clash tomorrow. It will be the 29th career Grand Slam final for Djokovic and the first for Tsitsipas. Earlier, Stefanos Tsitsipas of Greece defeated sixth seed Alexander Zverev in a five-set thriller 6-3-6-3-4-6-4-6-6-3 in the other last four clash at court. In the women's singles, unseeded Barbora Krejikova of Czech Republic will take on 31st seed Anastasia Pavluchenkova of Russia in the finals today. In the men's doubles, home favourites Pierre Hughes Herbert and Nicholas Mahout will clash with the pair of Alexander Bublik and Andrei Golubov of Kazakhstan in the final today. 
Tokyo Olympic Games bound wrestler Vinesh Phogat has won the women's 53 kg freestyle gold with an 8-0 win over Kristiana Beriza of Ukraine at the Poland ranking series in Warsaw. The gold winning effort of Vinesh is likely to improve her seeding in the 53 kg freestyle event at the Olympics to be held from 23rd of July till 8th of August in Japan. With 41 days to go for Tokyo Olympic Games, All India Radio today talks about India's best wrestler in the men's section, Bajrang Punia. Born on February 26, 1994 in Haryana's Jhajjar district, Bajrang has trained under 2012 Olympic bronze medalist Yogeshwar Dutt, ranked world number one in the 65 kg weight category. Currently, the 27-year-old booked his Tokyo Olympic quota in September 2019 after winning a bronze medal at the World Championships. मैं किसी भी टूर्नामेंट में जाता हूँ कोई भी फाइट खेलता हूँ तो मैं ये सोच के खेलता हूँ कि भाई ये मेरी फाइनल फाइट है मैं अपनी तरफ से बेस्ट करने की कोशिश करता हूँ मेरा भी यही सपना कि मैं देश के लिए ओलंपिक मेडल जीतूँ अगर आप आगे बढ़ना था तो उसके लिए आपको जुनून होता है ना वो In August last year, in order to improve his agility, reflexes, and feet and body movement on the mat, Badrang took up boxing under boxing coach Ronald Sims. With the Olympics just around the corner, Badrang opted to go to Russia with his coach George and Shako for mat training with strong sparring partners. In order to focus completely on his Olympic mission, Badrang quit social media earlier in March this year. Back in 2008, Badrang had stayed away from his mobile phone for almost a decade till 2017 to avoid any kind of distraction. The India Meteorological Department (IMD) has forecast heavy rainfall in Konkan region of Maharashtra, including Mumbai, Palghar, Thane, Raigad, and Ratnagiri districts, till 15th of June. IMD scientist K S Hosalikar said the region is likely to witness heavy to very heavy rainfall, increasing to extremely heavy rainfall in some areas. He said a red alert remains in place, urging people not to venture out of their homes unless it's urgent. In view of severe weather warnings, especially for tomorrow and Monday, the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai has asked disaster management authorities, fire brigade, best, and other power supply companies and relief and rehabilitation authorities to remain on high alert. Southwest monsoon is likely to reach Delhi by 15th of June, 12 days before its usual date of arrival of 27th of this month. India Meteorological Department said conditions are favorable for an early onset of monsoon in Delhi. It said under favorable meteorological conditions, monsoon is likely to advance over the entire country outside South Rajasthan and Kutch region of Gujarat during the next five six days. In 2008, also monsoon had reached Delhi on 15th of June. And now an overview of today's newspapers. New speed limits in Delhi for all the vehicles, says Hindustan Times. Speed caps for bikes, four wheelers in Delhi, says the Pioneer. Speed limits in Delhi revised for uniformity, says the Hindu. All papers report on their front page that this is the first major overhaul in the city's speed limits since 2011. 70 km per hour for highways 60 km per hour for ring roads 50 km per hour for most arterial roads and 30 km per hour for neighborhood areas cabinet expansion major social scheme likely soon is the lead in the pioneer apna dals anupriya sindhya may get births France backs India asks G7 to lift export curbs on vaccine materials reports the Indian Express on its front page and finally monsoon in capital by 15th of June ahead of the schedule says the met department in most dailies adding that the southwest monsoon will hit delhi mid june And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi to participate in outreach sessions of G7 summit today and tomorrow Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to chair 44 GST council meeting this morning External Affairs Minister S Jay Shankar says India moved mountains to contain second wave of COVID-19 Himachal Pradesh and Tamil Nadu extend lockdown with more relaxations. IMD warns of heavy rain in Mumbai and adjoining areas during weekend. Monsoon likely to reach Delhi by 15th of June, 12 days ahead of schedule. 
Sports Minister Kiran Rajeju launches Central Athlete Injury Management System for training of athletes for 2024 Olympics. In French Open tennis, Novak Djokovic stuns defending champion Rafael Nadal to set up summit clash with Stefanos Tsitsipas in men's singles. Barbora Krejcikova to take on Anastasia Pavluchenkova in the women's singles final today. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.